Okay, we're going to read chapter 10 of The Case of the School of Ghosts, but let's talk about chapter 9. So, chapter 9 is when they find out about the secret society, the Agatha Society. And they are fifth graders, and they each get to pick someone, and the new someones are always the fourth graders, and they have them come and take the oath during the sleepover. And then they got to see the book after they took the oath, and do you remember who was the um, first um, member or the organizer of the Agatha Society? Someone who works at the school right now. Mr. Poe. Okay, this chapter is called Case Closed. Does Mr. Poe know we have these keys? Agatha asks. I don't think so, the boy Alex says. If you read the book, you'll see the club only got keys about eight years ago. Cool, Michael says. We'll meet here again next Friday at five o'clock, Tim says. He opens the door behind him, and I try to push my nose inside. No, buddy, Connor calls. You're coming with us. Fine, I say. Maybe Connor will bring me to his next meeting, and I'll be able to go in that shed then. Remember, don't put the screws back on the grate very tight, Mara says. Otherwise, we won't be able to get into the school if we need to. The kids all say goodbye. Then the fifth graders leave through the door to the shed, and the fourth graders and I trot back down the tunnel the way we came. Connor and Jillian's flashlights light the way. The Agatha Society, Jillian says. That's so cool. I wonder why they picked us to join, Connor asks. Who cares why, Michael says. I'm just glad they did. We climb back into the furnace room. Michael and Jillian put the grate in place while Connor holds the flashlight. Ready to go back to the sleepover, Connor says. Sure, Michael replies, opening the door. There are lights on in the basement hallway now. Looks like the electricity is back on, Jillian says. Good, Connor says. Then we don't need our flashlights anymore. Yes, but I don't think the lights were on down here before the electricity went out. Why are they on now? We march up the stairs. There are a lot of lights on up here, too. I don't... I know these lights weren't on before. Hey, I hear people calling from another part of the school. Buddy, where are you, buddy? Connor, Michael, Jillian. Uh-oh, Connor says. Do you think people are looking for us? We're here, I yell, bounding toward the voices. I round a corner, and wow, it's like a party. There are so many humans here. Fourth grade humans and full grown humans like Mr. Poe and Mrs. Warner, and they are all petting me. Look, Mrs. Keene, says one of the kids. We found Buddy. And here comes Jillian, Connor, and Michael, too, says another kid. I break away from the kids who are petting me and race toward Mom. She gives me a little pat on the head, but her eyes are fixed on Connor, Michael, and Jillian. Where have you three been? Mom asks, standing up tall. She looks worried and a little bit mad. Connor bites his lip. Jillian lowers her eyes. Michael grinds his toe against the floor. Connor, Mom folds her arms. I asked you a question. Everyone's been looking for you. Uh, we were in the music room. Connor says in a small voice, it's true, Connor, Michael, and Jillian were in the music room, but there's a lot more to the story than that. Why were you in the music room, Mom asked. Didn't I say that the music room was off limits? We were, um, looking for ghosts, Michael says. Did you find any? Mr. Poe asks with a wink of his eye, in his eye. Michael starts to smile, but Jillian nudges him. Don't encourage them, Mr. Poe, Mom says. There are no such thing as ghosts. We're sorry, Mom, Connor says. We know we weren't supposed to be in the music room. We just wanted to see if we could figure out what Michael saw in there earlier. Well, I hope you, the three of you will follow directions for the rest of the night, Mom says. We all troop back to the library. Along the way, Mom leans over and says to Connor, We'll talk about this some more when we get home. Connor groans. We pass the main door to the school, and a flash of gray outside catches my eye. I stop. Is that cat with no name? No, it can't be. Cats don't like to be out in the rain. I peer closer. It sure looks like cat with no name. He's all huddled up against the door. I let all the humans go on without me. Then I pat over to the door. 
What are you doing here? I asked Cat. I actually feel a little bit bad for him being stuck out in the rain. Cat lifts his chin. I'm waiting for Agatha, he says coolly. We have an appointment. Ha! I say, there is no Agatha. Really? Cat blinks his eyes. Are you sure about that? Yes, I say. There are no such thing as ghosts. All that stuff about Agatha is just a story that's been passed down through this club called the Agatha Society, but you probably already know that. For some reason, Cat seems to know everything. I don't know where he gets his information. You probably know that that club members meet in the... Oh, let me see. Is that Buddy talking? Oh, no. It's Yeah, it's Buddy talking. Okay. You probably know that the club members meet in this tunnel that you can only get to from the shed out back or through the furnace room in the basement, I go on. That's probably why you told me to stay out of the basement. You didn't want me to find out all that. Cat blinks his eyes again. You may know practically everything there is to know, I tell Cat, but that doesn't mean you can make a fool out of me. Not today. It feels so good to finally stand up to Cat with no name. Well, there's always tomorrow, Cat says. Then he turns and walks out into the rainy night, his tail held high. I skip back to the library. The fourth graders are getting settled in their sleep ba sleeping bags. I go over and find a nice spot between Connor and Michael. I rest my head on Connor's stomach and my tail on Michael's leg. Mom turns on another movie and one by one, all the kids drift off to sleep. I guess I solved the case of the school ghost, but I have a feeling we haven't seen the last of Agatha or the last of the Agatha Society. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, that's the end of the book. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Yep, that's it. Okay, right hand in the air. I promise I will not take the test until we review. Because if I do, I will flunk and get warts. Amen. Okay, we'll review sometime soon.